it was uh, uh, a chance thing when uh, during COVID I was looking for what to do rather than sitting around doing nothing. So I picked up Discovery of India, which I'd heard about, but I'd never read. To book it up many and the one which I downloaded, I checked with some of the friends around in my colony. Satish is one such person from there, my neighborhood. Uh, incidentally, my younger brother. We, uh, I looked at the book and downloaded the centenary edition of uh, uh, Jawaharlal Nehru's book. So, the basic story, as Arvind Ji has uh, clearly put, we know that it is the victors who write the history of the conquered nation. It has happened throughout the history. Muslims have done it before that. Uh, our own people, our own history, the British started as if we did not exist before, uh, uh, before Chandragupta era. Or before Buddha, there was nothing at all in this country. And in fact, surprisingly, I was, I will quote a James Bell quote uh, on what he actually said. So the history, what they taught was uh, from 1756 to 1947. Uh, but the British were out to conquer our minds, not just the territories, unlike the Muslims, which uh, they had done. So they were interested in that part. Whereas they thought much ahead that if you colonize the minds of the nations, then your colonization is complete and it stays for a longer time, as we are discovering. Maybe it is a sorry state of awareness that I am saying in English, that I am not able to articulate in Hindi so much as I am at this stage. But I take your message that we will try to do something in Hindi. So, the first step that is in this, that was to uproot the Hindus from the Vedic civilization completely. And then substitute it with something else. Or Usme corollary was that uh, if you approve them from Vedic civilization, then they would be right for accepting Christianity also. Makale was the first person who took this step in 1835 with his uh, education policy. Aryan invasion theory was the foundation of the colonial history, since it justifies the coming of invaders. Pale Aryans I. Where uh, Shaksai, Hunzai, Skytianzai, Ranyanzai, Arabzai, Turkzai, or where Portuguese, French, or where Bad Bahamai, the British. So it is a continuation which is easily acceptable and it, it justifies that. But then he was smart. He had the Rig Veda translated by Max Muller to highlight the social evils and superstitions, polytheism, idol worship, and Hinduism, and to let the young men feel inferior to the British with their modern Christianity. That was the objective and the history was written in uh, that way. The Hindus thus alienated from their own Vedic civilization and cultural heritage were expected to easily accept Christianity as a religion. But the Indians read this history not only from 1835 to 1947, but afterwards also. So that is a sad part. Who, uh, who asked who to translate it? Macaulay had Max Muller hired from Oxford University and paid for by East India Company to translate, compile the Rig Veda and translate. Compilation was also a big task at that time. So he was, he could foresee that Rig Veda is at the root of Hindu civilization, Vedic civilization. So I believe, I, I believe uh, Max Muller was also taking classes uh, for the D then uh, Indian civil servants who would come from uh, England to this place. Wait, in England from where they would give the training? I'm, I'm forgetting. That, that was near near London. ICS uh, 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 classes later. Classes later. Jo yahan pe aate the. Sorry, I just want to say you okay? Yeah, yeah. So is 18. Independence के बाद हम वही history की ओर आगे पढ़े जा रहे हैं उसका main reason है जवाहरलाल नेहरू's discovery of India the book clearly reveals his thought process तो उसको पढ़ने के बाद मुझे लगा कि could there be a भारतीय lens to looking at the history of India और इससे पहले western lens क्या है उसमें in the book he clearly writes that I am approaching the history of India like a westerner would have done he goes further and says that he was, and I quote, it's very important, full of dislike for the present 
as well as for many of the relics of the past that I saw. This is Jawaharlal Nehru Kuti. And he said he wanted to scrap much of, her, much of her past heritage. There's a great deal that had to be scrapped and it must be scrapped. So this is the background. This is the against which he started writing the discovery of India. Or uske baad kya hua? Then he added the further two lenses of uh, socialism and communism. Soviet Union plus communism theory per se. So Western lens plus these two were complete. So uske upar hi mujhe laga ki history ke liye kya koi Bharatiya lens bhi ho sakta hai? Ki sirf yehi tarika hai India ki history ko dekhne ka. So the uh, Western lens is complete with AIT, which did not even question the Indian uh, Valley civilization, Indus Valley civilization. Archaeological excavations up the Gochukiti and Nehru name book my court big ki those excavations point to a continued religion from antiquity to the present. It was a living religion that was by Marshall and others. They wrote in their papers in the Illustrated Weekly when they discovered I IVC. 1935 May. and they wrote that this was much more ancient than the Egyptian and Mesopotamian uh, civilization. So, usme jo hai, ab Makale ne jo ye ground prepare kiya, uska his thinking was very clear, controlling the mind of the people, and he said very clearly, brown in color but English in thinking, very explicitly stated. I think many of us know about that. But uski jo khubi thi, he did not stop there. Having decided or understood about Rig Veda, he had Max Muller hired. Uske twin objectives thing. One was to highlight the social evils and superstitions, polytheism, idol worship, and Hinduism, to let the young man feel inferior to the British with their modern Christianity. And second, help the missionaries understand Hinduism so they could engage the Brahmins on their own turf. So they could have carry out discussions in India on the uh, faults in the Rigveda, Veda, on polytheism and other things. So there was the objective. Of course, incidentally, I want to say that Makale is the one who wrote the Indian Penal Code also for a colonized nation. Penal, as very clearly says, and now after such a long time, we have replaced by the Bharati and Aisha Neta. Max Miller, ne, he did not let the colonial masters down. You will be surprised that the British king at that time, Pura Jave project Pura ho gaya, British king recognized Max Muller as having provided service far superior to what a British regiment would have done. That is not merely fighting and controlling, but well beyond that. And he was paid an extra honorarium as well as given a certificate for that. He had scant knowledge of Sanskrit. Jabusna Shrukia, 1849 ke aspas, us time pe. Usne, he had never been to India. He had never studied the Sanskrit language from scholars. He studied from Eugene Bernoff. Eugene Bernoff learned Sanskrit from his father, another Frenchman in Paris. So they had never been to India. So the knowledge of Sanskrit, as you can well imagine now, if all of us put it in the same shoes and try to learn, how much can we learn Sanskrit? So the knowledge of grammar and other things, he didn't even know. And he didn't know the social conditions, the faith of Hindus and uh, their rituals, the gurukuls and the rigorous methods of teaching Sanskrit grammar, the epics, the six systems of philosophy, our darshans, Upanishads and other scriptures. Study of the Vedas came after years of preparation. Maharshi Dhyanam ne likha hai ki 15 saal ki preparation chahiye before a student can be given the Veda to start reading. So that is the level which was required. And with the zero knowledge, he started compiling and translating uh, the Rig Veda. So obviously the objective was polytheism and superstitions. So in the Rig Vedic shloks, they found mythology as we were talking where there was none, where there was knowledge because many of the names were interpreted as uh, proper names instead of common names, which Swami Dhananda explained clearly, if there's a distinction between yogic and logic names. Yogic is that which dhatu se leke, usko, usko derivative meaning rai jate hai. To usme koi mythology nahi hai, story nahi hai, wo kisi ka proper naam nahi hai. If you say Agni, uh, Surya, Varun, they were not names of gods. They were not names. 
but then they were interpreted as names and everything which related to that in a particular show was converted into a story, a myth, a mythology. So they accepted what uh, had been done by uh, Sion. Sion interpreted the first Ved, Rig Ved in a big way in 1400 century, 1400 Christian era. Was time ne, and at that time, the uh, uh, the understanding or translation would sh or should have been to the authors who existed closer to the uh, Rig Vedic times, because Rig Vedas are uh, Rig Ved and other Vedas are prehistoric. Post time pe, beach me the knowledge was lost, and then many people created Brahmans, the Rishis and Munis who came, so they created Brahmans for each of the Vedas. And from those Vedas, uh, uh, Brahmas, then came other things like uh, sutras, and which are followed by Upanishads and others. And secondly, he gave the age of uh, Rig Veda from 1500 to 1200 BC. That is, the Veda was created only at that time. And there was a compulsion. An Irish priest, John Usher, he had declared the age of the earth to be 4004 BC. So they had to be all within that. And previous uh, civilizations are also uh, coming under that era. So Max Muller following Sina and introducing mythology and giving the age of uh, uh, Rig Veda to 1500 BC. And uh, additionally, uh, he said that the Aryan race theory was something which he promoted. Aryans as a race and Indo-Europeans as uh, one race, and then the Indians and the Europeans combining as one race. So in a way, they wanted to appropriate the Indian civilization, Indian Vedic civilization as European linking it with that. They had done it earlier also, when they appropriated the Greek civilization. And uh, as you all know that uh, Christianity came much later and they had uh, uh, the Roman emperors who were there were uh, butcher and almost like uh, nomads at that time. But they appropriated the Greek civilization when the Renaissance began saying that they are the descendants of Greeks. But surprisingly, Max Muller went to say that uh, we are not Semitic, talking about the European race. We are not Semitic. We are the descendants of uh, Indo-Vedic people, or Indo-whatever, Indo-Aryan race. And the theory of comparative philology, which they created was to look at the words and see the comparisons. And on that basis, on those comparisons, they declared that uh, Sanskrit was closer to Latin and Greek and uh, German than anything else. But then Sri Aurobindo, when he carried out his studies, and he found that Tamil was closer to Sanskrit, 40% compared to any other European language. So it is the it is the forced colonial uh, narrative which was built that is showing that if there was a proto language of which we are descendants, uh, then uh, Sanskrit is closer to Latin and Greek, not to Tamil. Not to? Not to Tamil. Mm -hmm. Whereas Arbindo found clearly that it was closer to Tamil. That is to say clearly that Aryans and Dravidians were a homogeneous race of this nation, this country, not a divide, a divide which we are still struggling to fight. And this aryan Dravidian divide with the colonial narrative created was, uh, as we can see the results, has led us to say that there is a, a divide between a Maharashtra and a Punjabi, a Tamil with a Malayalam and this and that. So all those deep things have uh, emerged in this society. So Mahesh Vidyanand, he wrote his books, uh, Satyar Prakash and Rig Veda Di Bhashi Bhumika in 1872-1873. And he showed that Vedas are not just yajna and rituals, but they contain spiritual knowledge and science. Uh, Sain, on the other hand, simply said that uh, this Ved, Rig Veda is only about rituals, nothing else. And then it is uh, mythology in it. So, uh, then Pandit Gurudev, Gurudev Vidyarthi wrote a paper on Vedic terminology for Europeans in 1883, which was published by Oxford University. 
But then you see, the, when they demolished the myth of mythology, both of them, in Europe as well as in India, this was not carried far. This was suppressed. Swami Vivekananda, as he said, Arvind just mentioned, saying that Aryans are the original natives of India, and he's the one who first said that Garb uh, Sekhau and Hindu will take pride in the uh, Hindu civilization. Although, of course, Swami Vivekananda did not uh, carry out any deep analysis of the Vedas, but the overall Hindu pantheon, Hindu religion, Upanishad downwards, is a remarkable work to promote this idea. And uh, in fact, you have one publication here also, of the uh, on Aryan invasion theory, first volume which uh, we have published. Sri Aurobindo published The Secret of the Vedas in 1915, supporting the interpretation of Dhyan, saying that the grammar, the way it has to be interpreted, and then the scholars who lived closer to that, scholars of those days means the rishis and munis, who lived closer to Rigvedic times, are the Brahmins when they were created, Taitriya Brahman, Taitriya uh, Sanita, and so on. They were the ones who understood uh, Sanskrit well, who could interpret. They were Yasks, as the uh, book is Nirokta, and uh, Nigantu, and several other things. So, Sain unko ignore karke, he put the mythology. Because in that era, Brahmanism was on the rise. Brahmanism in the, in the wrong sense, the fraudsters who were controlling as priesthood. But then this is what uh, continued. And Hindu voices in all this time, Swami Dhyanand, Vivekanand, Arvindo time, they were suppressed and ignored by the colonial narrative. So this narrative was that Aryan invasion theory is the pillar. Rig Veda interpreted by Max Muller is the foundation and thereby Hindus losing the, their roots, Vedic heritage roots. In fact, you'll be surprised that Karl Marx wrote an article in 1853 in New York Tribune at that time, saying that India was the only colony which had been uprooted from its uh, heritage. The colonizers, the British have not done anywhere else because this was such an advanced civilization that they could not handle it. They could not believe that it actually existed. So another thing which they did, the British mischief in writing the history of India was to accommodate Islam as a glorious era in the history. So they are the ones who mischievously divided the history into ancient India, Mughal period, and then British era. Now look at the 10,000 year old ancient uh, Vedic period with grand epics like uh, Ramayana, Mahabharata, uh, Bhagavad Gita and others with uh, 130 years of Mughal rule, only 130, from Akbar in 1578 when he captured Bengal to 1707 when Aurangzeb died. After that, they were titular heads and Marathas were actually claiming uh, almost all control of uh, India. Many of the British scholars write clearly that they conquered they took British India from, uh, from the Marathas and not from the Mughals. So, Ekso Sal was Mughal rule. And then you say that this is composite culture, that this composite culture is their creation, which negates the ancient Vedic civilization completely. When Jizya was there, killing of temples, destruction was rampant. And only 30, 32 years of uh, Akbar's rule, from 1578, when he captured Bengal, to 1605, when he died. So Thais Atai Sal, Jizya was removed. And Jizya was reinstated immediately when his son took over, Jahangir took over. And this was the condition of the courtiers, the court, because Akbar was going, uh, trying to go astray from Islam. So only 27 to 30 years, you can say that uh, uh, in this country, the Islamic genocide, conversion, Jizya, was relaxed, our destruction of temples was relaxed. So would you like to compare this Mughal rule period to the ancient Vedic era and then the later part of the British history, where Maharana Pratap, Lakshmi Bhai, Shivaji, they were used to uh, small time chieftains. We had also a story about the I didn't think of They were And of course, the battle of uh, 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 battle on behalf of Akbar by Mansing with Varana Pratap of uh, Mewar 
is disputed that they claim that uh, he lost but then that was not the case many other historians point out so these are many things which need to be uh, studied and researched more in detail but the interesting thing is ki nehru was totally silent on makale sare 600 page ki kitab mein he has written only one sentence and i scanned the book again and again and then i scanned it with the it tools also ek sentence hai page number maine book mein quote kiya hai where he says uh makale's minute on education was accepted and english system was introduced earth shaking changes which he introduced in this country he had no comment on that he had no comment and he was lauding the negation of vedic civilization he was lauding the growth of the composite uh, culture uh, which is as i said if at all 30 years of uh, akbar rule when jizya was removed and i have then shown aryan race theory how it actually emerged by various scholars also sir william jones is going down to uh, uh, max muller the colonial narrative they started creating consciously in 1780s william jones who was the chief justice of uh, supreme court in calcutta uh, he is the one who first started saying when he learned so much kalidas ke kitab se shuru kiya unhone shakuntalam se and then they dis- discovered wealth of literature in sanskrit both uh, secular as well as non secular the religious one so they started uh, this narrative building a conscious effort by academic scholars historians linguists parliamentarians missionaries and others in britain aided by the government to build a colonial narrative of the indian civilization to suit their purpose of transferring her wealth to britain and other names were ferguson macpherson golden childe dodwell vincent smith and many more who were at the center of this narrative building that the indian vedic civilization was primitive and barbaric a rude civilization that was living in dark ages waiting to be rescued by modernity brought by christianity and science this was the underlying theme which as we all see sadly we are still struggling to find we are still struggling to find this narrative aaj bhi many of us believe large number of us believe ki we were a primitive and barbaric civilization and we were a rude civilization which christianity came and discovered that they are delivered interestingly main yahan pe ek baat kehna chahta hu before i know time is less ki जो इस तरह की जो सिविलाइजेशन के ऊपर जेम्स मिल की एक हिस्ट्री का पॉइंट है अच्छा एक और पॉइंट है मैक्स मुलर इन एटीन नाइनटीज he retracted the aryan race theory he said there was no there is no such thing as aryan race i have never said that and he said that i simply meant sanskrit language by aryan by aryans not as a race so he retracted that he also retracted that the age of uh, rigveda could be fixed to 1500 bc so he said no power on earth can do that and i have quoted it. in one of his lectures the fourth lectures i think he wrote that it is not possible to fix the age of rigveda so these retractions were were there as part of history but you know what the historians all historians have ignored his retractions the original thing what he said is the story is the narrative and uh, nehru went to uh, england in 1905 to so, unse pehle 1890 1899 or 1898 mein his retraction had been published but they were totally ignored but the damage had been done as i said irretrievably the original narrative uh, stayed none of the scholars including of course nehru ab my sath mein rahun yeah now i'll come to nehru's book uh, to present uh, a few points salient points which he himself admits writes very nicely that idea of india before the islamic and european invaders bharat varsh was the home of hindus from times immemorial with some who adopted buddhism and offshoot of hinduism a few hundred years before christ early invaders who all came from the northwest they were absorbed harshvardhan kushans and others they became part of uh, 
इंडिया और हिंदुजम पर उसके बाद जो है एंड दिस वाज ऑफ कोर्स पॉसिबल बिकॉज ऑफ वैदिक एरा एथोस दैट इज वसुदेव कुटुंबकम जो हम हर वक्त बोलते रहते हैं दैट वाज समथिंग व्हिच वाज एक्चुअली प्रैक्टिस्ड एवरीवन फ्री टू वर्शिप वाज फ्री टू वर्शिप देयर गॉड्स सिंस द वेदा सेड दैट ऑल पाथ्स लीड टू गॉड और उस जमाने में इट वाज वेरी कॉमन देयर वाज अ जैना किंग एंड द पॉपुलेशन वाज हिंदू एंड बुद्धिस्ट मिक्स्ड टुगेदर अदर वाज अ बुद्धिस्ट किंग एंड द पॉपुलेशन वाज Uh, was of all kinds so grassroots democracy and uh, tolerance of the rulers towards the religions is something which is native to bharatwarsh and that is something which emerges so the idea of india that ancient hindus formed a single unified country with ganga as a sacred river to which all the pilgrims from all over the country would come and this has been happening from times immemorial and all our tales of ramayana and mahabharat which are there common folklore upanishads and gita gita translated to the common man so that was the beauty of the uh, rishis and scholars and joining with the common people explaining the narrative of the hindu religion which was understood but then this idea of india changed later to accommodate the islamic invaders and what emerged was the uh, composite culture we are now you are saying that the islamic culture is the dominant one and the vedic culture because of superstition and polytheism was irrelevant and is no longer there and is something which has to be which has to be scoffed at or laughed at or whatever and the complex which was created amongst all of us hum sab usi mein padhe hain aur humse pehle bhi padhe so they all and we are still trying to get rid of the inferiority complex as arvind ji said ki bhai kuch humne apni bhashaon mein karna chahiye apni hindi mein aur isme ये चीजें लानी जरूरी है पढ़ने के लिए अब उनके जो मेन थीसिस थे आई विल जस्ट रीड द टाइटल्स कलोनियल थीसिस ऑफ सुपरस्टिशन एंड सोशल व्यूज इन हिंदू सोसाइटी नेगेशन ऑफ एंशियन वैदिक सिविलाइजेशन मुस्लिम इन्वेडर्स नाउ दिस इज द मोस्ट इंटरेस्टिंग थिंग्स नेहरू सेड कि बिकॉज ऑफ ऑर्थोडॉक्सी एंड रिजिडिटी हिंदू सोसाइटी had refused or had become stagnated degenerated it was not advancing for so we needed invaders to come and reinvigorate us any accepted islamic invaders coming to reinvigorate us those who were destroying our temples our architecture those who were promoting uh, forcefully converting because the religion said if you don't believe then kufr and uh, uh islam they cannot exist together one has to win over the other and i have written quite a bit in a particular chapter so i will not go into that muslim invaders reinvigorated the hindu society ab jaise aapne kaha bhi ki max muller ka wo uske baad padhna zaruri tha before the civil servants came to india uh, 1817 ki james mill ki history hai which was also something which was taught to the ics people who came to india to convert उसमें मैं दो पैरा पढ़ना चाहता हूं जेम्स मिल हिस्ट्री ऑफ इंडिया 1817 इट सम्स अप द कॉलोनियल नैरेटिव एंड इट बिकेम द स्टैंडर्ड ऑन द हिस्ट्री ऑफ हिंदू पीपल जेम्स मिल सेज दैट कोट दीस पीपल इंडीड आर परफेक्टली डेस्टिट्यूट ऑफ हिस्टोरिकल रिकॉर्ड्स देयर एंशिएंट लिटरेचर अफोर्ड्स नॉट अ सिंगल प्रोडक्शन टू व्हिच द हिस्टोरिकल कैरेक्टर बिलोंग्स ही एम्फसाइजेस दिस पॉइंट फर्दर इन अ फुटनोट फुटनोट में वो क्या लिखता है देर इज नो नोन हिस्ट्री ऑफ हिंदुस्तान दैट रेस्ट ऑन द फाउंडेशन ऑफ हिंदू मेटीरियल रिकॉर्ड एक्सटांट बिफोर द पीरियड ऑफ मोहम्मद एंड कॉन्क्वेस्ट फॉर हिम इंडियन हिस्ट्री स्टार्टेड आफ्टर द मुस्लिम इन्वेडर्स हैड कम एंड एस्टैब्लिश दमसेल्स सो टू जेम्स मिल देर इज नो हिस्ट्री ऑफ इंडिया बिफोर द पीरियड ऑफ मोहम्मद एंड कॉन्क्वेस्ट इट इज इंटरेस्टिंग इन इज प्रेफेस वो प्रेफेस में राइट की i am a european scholar i have studied these with such traditions that i can write about the history of india and like max muller he had never come to india he had never seen what the culture was what the social conditions were what religion and social uh, ways of living were and he says with my training i can write based on the material which has come to me and 1817 by that time upanishad had been translated astronomy books of uh, translated by colbrook william jones had written uh, about bhagavad gita 
and Manusmriti also. So what he did, he picked up only Manusmriti and the distorted Manusmriti in which he used all that to attack Hinduism and bring about polytheism. Jagannath Puri ke rath ke aage bhai wo apne aap ko peet rahe hai aur wo ehsan 13 din ke liye wo baal kata ke pada hua hai zameen pe so raha hai so these two three things they have emphasized critically to denounce the social evils in Hinduism aur jo science ki sari books thi James Bill ignored completely absolutely and that is what they were talking and in fact I have almost extensively written on this uh, in the book, Manusmriti ke baare mein maine isliye likha hai zada in the last chapter of the book to bring out that the distorted Manusmriti it can be seen where it is distorted. Many scholars have done it and I have uh, quoted from that. So then now coming after all this, so I came to thinking that should there not be a Bharti lens to study our history, as Arvindji said, it is a book I started writing for myself. And he does it all the time to write for himself. So that is how actually I started. Uh, Nehru's idea of India, British rule, uh, Macaulay's education system, enslaving the Hindu mind, Vedic heritage, Maharshi Dhyanand versus Max Muller, Christian missionaries, proselytization of Hindus and the rule of uh, Max Muller in that, uh, Islamic invasion of India, did they ever Indianize? Now it's a big thing which I have tried to cover more so because of the recent things. The Ajki Tariq maybe when they declared the two nation theory, that is stating clearly that uh, the Muslims cannot coexist with non believers. Sri Arbindo, I have quoted extensively where he said that he, how can you live with a religion which says that I can't tolerate you? How can you coexist with that? Criticizing Mahatma Gandhi, he wrote uh, in one of those, and I have quoted this here. Or be kafi cheese in Arbindo se many quote ki hai on education system also. So there's a lot. In fact, uh, the material which uh, I have tried to cover is uh, far too big. For this lecture, I started reading my own book. So then I found that it was too much to uh, put together in, uh, in one book. So it's uh, difficult to appreciate. And I must appreciate Bakul Gupta, Arjanji, you'll be surprised. He was my first critique. It go my chapter whether it is making sense. So, uh, so that is how this uh, book uh, was completed. And I have in the last chapter, I have suggested certain interesting things about what uh, what to do. In Islam ke chapter, mein I have brought out this role of Sufis. They were the front enemies, spies for them. In 1191, he was losing all the time. Gauri went coming. So then, 78 May, 1178, May, Chishti came along with him. When Gauri lost and he went back. So he establishes Khan Kwa and all. Because Hindu world unsuspecting, okay, Sadhu is sitting here, so sit here. So he is the one who then sent a word, now you come, and now you let your army sit there and say that, uh, till I get orders from my elder brother, I will not attack. Prithviraj was 11 times hard. And Prithviraj Chauhan could have chased him to death any number of times. But our ethos, Vedic ethos, that they don't want to kill them. And then they, he simply said this, or Rajput army jo hai, aram se bad gai. and overnight they attacked and they killed everyone and they won. So, in fact, there's a paper which I have quoted by Javed Ansari from uh, London Islamic Institute in which he says that it is the Sufis who were after creating an Islamic kingdom in India. We must be beholden to them that they did that. And then probably you can see that Islamic? Islamic state in India, Islamization of India. They were the ones who laid the foundation for this. And it's a 1981 paper which is there. And that, as we can see, that it is something which is an unfinished agenda, which we are going again and again. And I was surprised to read uh, from uh, Iqbal's speech, 1930 speech on two nation theory, where he says that, hey, Bichalo, Muslims and non-Muslims cannot live together. One has to win over the other. 
तो ये सेज दैट मुस्लिम आर लूजिंग हर मेंटेलिटी एक तो है कि हमारे पास लीडर नहीं है जिना के अलावा सेकेंड ही सेज वी आर लूजिंग हर्ड मेंटेलिटी इफ द हर्ड मेंटेलिटी इज नॉट देयर इस्लाम विल नॉट सक्सीड एंड हर्ड मेंटेलिटी यू सॉ ऑन दी डायरेक्ट एक्शन डे एंड हर्ड मेंटेलिटी यू सॉ इन दी शाहीन बाग सी ए पी एफ आई वी सी इट एवरी डे सो हर्ड मेंटेलिटी इट इज इज इट बेसिक टू इस्लाम आई मीन आई डोंट नो बट द वे इकबाल पुट इट प्रॉबेबली इट इज और बड़ी इंटरेस्टिंग चीजें हैं Daniel Pipes, I have, I have also quoted on Islam and other things, so which bring out uh, their facets which we are not aware of. So, one point or I want to tell you that starting with the John Playfair, 1789, his own paper is on uh, uh, on the Brahman tables as they used to be called. Brahman tables could be used to predict. the positions of planets predict solar and lunar eclipses also which they could not do at that time in europe it was difficult for them they had to spend a lot of time on that so he was a mathematician professor of mathematics at university of edinburgh so he wrote that paper analyzing the brahman tables and what uh, the jesuits had brought and uh, uh, those in french scholars with him us time the theory of gravity say he proved that 3102 bc the way the positions are described kaliyuga that was a real thing and the brahmars must have observed those tables observed those positions and then he says that if they observed those positions in 3102 bc to that level of correctness they must have been doing for the last 1000 2000 years to state to reach that level of perfection so the civilization would go back to at least 5000 bc even by professor john playfair so colbrook wrote another paper and then interestingly nobody here would know bal gangadhar tilak wrote a big book on the orion brigashish jo nakshatra hai and the antiquity of the vedic era unhone taitriya sanhita ke jo shlok mention hai usse position ko calculate karke he has found 6400 bc as the time when taitriya sanhita was combined and bal gangadhar tilak wrote at the end ki ye main iske baad mujhe time nahi milega i will not come back to revise this book ever to ye this is the beauty of the digital archives as you were saying that ki wo lot of these books are available on uh, google a lot of these books in the archives and i have found this of great interest a whole wealth of reading material was discovered which i have tried to capture in uh, one way or another to last point at this point is what is the history of bharat as we should now be writing i have not written i have only pointed out given pointers basically ki kya kar sakte hain kya aage likh sakte hain aur ek main jo problem hai ki abhi jo hai bharatvarsh ki history mein islam ka kya role rahega when they are reasserting that islam and non islam cannot live together so what is the narrative we come back to arvind that is if uh, i can't tolerate you so how do you live with that uh, kind of uh, thinking with this i will stop i think i have taken more time than thank you for uh,